Hello everyone, this is Raz. Welcome to my channel again. So this video is about frequently asked questions with answers in research methodology. So I have made some questions um, so which are popularly being asked by many students or researchers. So some of the questions um, are how should I write a research topic? So many of you have uh, asked uh, how should I prepare a research topic for my uh, engineering uh, studies or for my mathematics studies or English literature or public health or medicine etc. So I'll be explaining that. Similarly why and how to do sampling in research. Uh, what is literature? What are the sources of literature and how to do literature review? Similarly what is theoretical framework? So I'll be showing the example. Uh, what should I write in methodology section of my research proposal? So many of you ask the question, uh, what should I write in methodology section or chapter 3 of my research proposal? So I'll be showing that one as well. Similarly, what is operational definition of terms? Uh, how do I write it? Uh, why do I need it? And another question popularly being asked is, what are independent and dependent variables and what are the examples? Similarly, do you always need software for data analysis? What are common software for data analysis? And another question being asked popularly or commonly is what are descriptive and inferential statistics? So how to do statistical analysis of data? And another question being asked is does association always mean causation? So what are the differences between those two terms? Okay, so let me go one by one. So the first question is how should I write, write a research topic? So in any subject, when you're writing a, a research topic, when you're doing a research and want to prepare a research topic, you should focus on two major things, okay? One is outcome of interest and another is target population. For example, if you want to measure the people's view or perception towards newly formed government in Brazil, then your outcome of interest is view towards the newly formed government. Okay, that is what you want to measure and the target population is people of Brazil so these two things you should keep in mind okay if you want to measure the use of information technology in banks of Delhi then the outcome of interest is use of information technology so you want to measure um, how they've been using it <coughs> sorry and the target population is the banks of Delhi so your target population can be people it can be institution or animal or place depending on the title in the first title, the target population is the people of Brazil, but in the second title, the tar target population is the banks of Delhi, okay? So don't get confused with that. So remember these things when you are preparing your research topic. <coughs> the outcome of research should be measurable. So don't try to make that outcome too vague, okay? Because you can measure the view towards the government, so it's measurable. And also you can measure the use of information technology. So the outcome of interest should be measurable. Don't try to duplicate the same topic in the same place, in the same time, so say same year, okay? And also don't make the title too long or too short. There is no hard and fast rule for that. Different institutions may have their own rule, but um, don't make it too long or too short. Just make it in such a way that it measures these uh, elements. So reviewing the past studies from scientific journals is always helpful because they have the topics, so it may be useful for you to refer to those papers already published uh, which are found in the internet or some database so they are always helpful so this is how you can write the research topic in any subject another question is why and how to do sampling so usually uh, doing research in entire population of interest is not feasible okay in terms of time in terms of cost uh, resources similarly in terms of human errors okay because when you're covering the entire population then there may be uh, you may be prone to more uh, errors okay so your research may be prone to more errors so we try to study a subset of population and make assumptions about the population with some level of confidence this is why the sampling is needed okay so broadly sampling is of two types one is probability sampling and another is non-probability sampling so probability sampling is uh, the participants in the population have uh, the fixed or defined probability, usually the same probability of being selected. So the common examples are simple random sampling, um, systematic sampling, multi-state sampling, cluster sampling, etc. So 
so you might uh, want to uh, look in the internet or some textbooks about the probability sampling in detail similarly non probability samplings are also commonly being used when usually when the sampling frame is not available okay so the common methods in non probability sampling are consecutive sampling in which you take the respondent one after another judgmental sampling you make the criteria in your mind or the judgments on whom to choose and whom not to choose convenience sampling you usually choose a specific or convenient location or time to select the people quota sampling is uh, the technique in which you sample the respondents in such a way that once your quota is met you, you just um, complete the sampling okay you just you just don't interview uh, more people similarly snowball sampling is when you interview one person and that person leads you to another person okay so the modified version of snowball sampling is also uh, called respondent driven sampling okay rds which is more um, refined or advanced form of snowball sampling okay in quantitative studies the sample size can be calculated using certain formula so you can use um, the formula which are available uh, in certain calculators uh, so uh, go to openapi.com so which has the uh, which has the inbuilt uh, formula for calculating the sample sizes and the user formula is mostly recommended when you are using the probability sampling okay so in non probability sampling even though you use the formula it, it, it may not give the true representation of the population so it's better to use the formula in probability samplings okay so uh, when you have to given a list of population that list of population is called the sampling from the sampling frame so um, you can uh, calculate the sample size similarly in qualitative studies when the sample size uh, sorry uh, the sample size is uh, mostly judgmental in nature and is estimated based on the point of saturation so the point of saturation is the sample size beyond which the information becomes saturated and doesn't add more value to your research okay so in qualitative studies the respondent driven sampling or the snowball samplings are more commonly used in qualitative studies and they are mostly judgmental so um, you don't need much of the statistical calculation in the qualitative studies therefore um, we may not need the software for calculating the sample size in qualitative studies okay so another question is um, what is literature what are the sources of literature and how to do literature review so a literature can be anything okay it can be a journal or it can be a textbook it can be even a movie and interview okay so a youtube video can also be a literature so a newspaper can be a, a literature and online database of policy document a report a proposal a quote okay so some quotation or some saying by some famous personality a theory a formula or anything which is documented whether in printed or in electronic form it can be a literature so reviewing that literature is called literature review so whenever uh, so um, whenever you are doing the literature review always consider the credibility of the source and information okay and whether it fits your research and meets your purpose so should always look in the authenticity of the information present in that literature okay so therefore people usually say okay don't follow the information in wikipedia or something like that it's because um, the information can be edited by um, the public in the wikipedia uh, there are secure uh, pages in wikipedia as well which you can cite okay so which the public cannot edit and only the authorized people can edit but always uh, make sure that the information that you follow or the information that you refer to is credible um, so it can be relied upon okay so this is why they recommend you to consider the journal articles for literature review so the general steps for literature review is you can use the keywords whenever you are using the internet search and using the keywords you can search the literature and uh, you observe and check whether the search uh, results meet your aim based on this search and then you might want to revise the keywords okay and search again and then analyze the findings and then you have to paraphrase the findings okay don't copy and paste the findings from the literature so after that you can use that in your document and don't forget to use the references don't forget to give credit to the original author which is known as citation or citing that uh, article okay 
so it might be easy with referencing software such as Mendeley or EndNote because this software help us to search the literature and maintain the library and also help to cite uh, the, uh, the references okay so um, I recommend you uh, to use the referencing software as well but some people uh, want to do manually that's also fine okay another question uh, popularly being asked is what is theoretical framework so in mostly in qualitative studies uh, the term theoretical framework is uh, used but in quantitative studies uh, they mostly use the term conceptual framework okay these are more or less similar theoretical framework is based on the existing theories but the conceptual framework may not be based on the existing theory so it, it may be it may be the flow of information uh, sorry the the relationship between the variables okay so the flow chart which shows the relationship between dependent and independent variables so that is conceptual framework mostly in the quantitative studies but in mostly in the qualitative studies the theoretical frameworks are being used so it's the structure or the flow chart that helps to analyze interpret explain and discuss your research outcome or your research findings so for example you want to measure why the intravenous drug use is rising in a certain city such as, such as uh, Delhi so you could you could use a already established theory to analyze your results such as proceed, proceed framework which is developed by um, Lawrence W. Green okay, and uh, Marshall Cruiser so this is an example of the proceed, proceed framework in which you measure an outcome with reference to certain variables okay, and those variables are further categorized and you look in the cause of the cause okay so there are different phases so social assessment epidemiological assessment behavioral and environmental assessment educational and ecological assessment so so this framework can be used to analyze your uh, outcome so this kind of framework is called theoretical framework theoretical framework helps not only to analyze or discuss your research outcome but it also helps to develop your questionnaire okay so based on certain theoretical framework you can develop the questionnaire and that questionnaire helps to generate the data in such a way that that data can be analyzed and discussed based on this framework back again so this is really useful and this is really cool so another question um, is what should I write in methodology section of my research proposal this is very commonly uh, asked question so I get this question in online groups uh, such as uh, in Facebook groups or even in my emails uh, or in my personal messages that okay uh, hello Raz uh, how should I write uh, the methodology section of my research proposal and then um, uh, there are certain uh, tricks and there are certain uh, guidelines that help you write the methodology section so methodology section is also called the materials and method section and uh, it tells you about the detailed process of your, of your research okay so it should contain um, the simple description of basic WS questions uh, for your research project such as which design to use whether you want to use the experimental design or observational design whether you want to uh, do a cross-sectional study or a longitudinal follow-up study whether you want to do a retrospective study or pro prospective study okay similarly when to collect data whether you want to collect data in 2019 uh, between uh, okay let's say uh, October and December uh, whether you want to collect at the time um, in weekdays or something like that so when to collect the data similarly where to collect the data whether you want to collect in a public place or in a closed space or in the classroom or in the hospitals or in the households etc so with whom to ask the questions another question okay so who are your respondents uh, who are your study population okay so how to collect the data whether you want to do the interview or you want to do the group discussion or whether you want to uh, do the observation whether you want to do the biochemical assessment etc and what variables to use so what information you want to collect from the given respondents similarly how to analyze the data whether you want to analyze the data descriptively uh, which software you want to use whether you want to do the inferential statistics etc so the major headings uh, that you should mention in the methodology section of, uh, of the proposal or, or the research project are study design and site, study population, sampling strategy, sample size, tools and techniques of data collection, inclusion and exclusion criteria, methods of data analysis, potential bias, etc. So the format differs from institution to institution, but by and large, these are the basic components or elements to be included in the 
methodology section okay so for example if you are doing the study in basic sciences such as chemistry or physics then you may have additional headings such as apparatus used or the or the materials used okay so so these are the basic elements that you should write in the methodology section of your research proposal another question is what is operational definition of terms so how do i write it why do i need it do i need it in, your, in my research or not okay the aim of any research is to measure the certain outcome of characteristic we all agree with this right so to do so it becomes easy if we define the boundary of the outcome if we define the outcome so if we don't define the outcome so it may be difficult to do a research okay so defining the boundary or scope of the outcome may not be same as the dictionary meaning or definition we may define it to suit our aim and objective this is called operational definition for example i want to measure the effects of social media on brain development of kids okay so if i want to measure the effect of social media on brain development of kids i may define brain development as improvement in iq scores and kids as children below 10 years so it is recommended to put the operational definition in such a way that your findings can later be compared with other literature so don't try to make your operational definition too much unique okay so that uh, when you make it too much unique it may be difficult to compare your finding with other literature so the review of literature is always recommended for preparing or defining your terms okay so for writing your operational definitions another question is what are dependent and independent variables so what are the examples so the dependent variable is the primary outcome of your interest and independent variable are the predictors or the factors associated with that outcome of interest for example if your research topic is factors affecting profitability of hotels in dubai your dependent and independent variables could be um, so the dependent variable is profitability of hotels and the independent variables are the factors that affect the profitability factors that are influencing or associated with the profitability such as investment by uh, the company by the hotel the location whether it's in the uh, very crowded place the busy place or in the very lonely place similarly the cleanliness and the hygiene of the hotel the parking space okay so how much uh, how many vehicles the 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 parking space can accommodate similarly the advertisement uh, or the popularity of, of the hotel so this this may be associated with the profitability of the hotel so the review of literature always helps to frame your dependent and independent variables in your research okay so another question popularly being asked is uh, do you always need software for data analysis and what are the common software for data analysis so the answer is uh, it's not always necessary that we need software for data analysis for example we may count the cases calculate the percentages averages are the means and standard deviations manually by making the dummy tables so in qualitative studies as well we can manually make themes and describe the findings in those themes manually so we may not need the software uh, but it makes our work easier in uh, many cases when when the data set is too big in quantitative studies when when we have large data set and when the calculations are too much complex to be to be done by hand then the software always makes our work easier in that case so in qualitative studies as well there are certain software okay so when there are too many respondents in qualitative studies and when the themes are too many when the responses are too diverse and when the depth of analysis is expected to be high the software helps uh, analyze our data well so the commonly used software in data analysis are in quantitative studies they are microsoft actual spss stata uh, SASH, R, PSPP, MATLAB, AP-INFO, etc. And qualitative studies the most commonly used are Atlas TI and, uh, and Vivo. There are other software as well. So these are uh, the common software that I've been using and uh, so based on my experience these are the most popular uh, software for data analysis. So another question is what are descriptive and inferential statistics? Okay. So the descriptive statistics is describing the data of the given sample and the common measures are frequency measures in which we count the cases the measure of central tendency such as average uh, mode uh, median okay and the measure of dispersion such as range and uh, standard deviation so in inferential statistics uh, we draw the inferences of the population with some confidence based on the analysis of the sample data and the common measures are bivariate and multivariate statistics such as chi square test t test anova correlation regression etc 
So to do descriptive statistics, we, we don't require the representative sample, but to do inferential statistics, it needs the representative sample to draw inferences about the population. So last but not the least, so does association mean causation? Okay. So association, so two variables are said to be associated if the change in value of one variable affects the change in value of another variable. So not always association means causation. Okay. So for example, the level of physical exercise among male students was found to be higher than female. So in this case, gender and level of physical exercise are associated. However, being male may not be a causal factor for higher physical activity. So talking about causation, two variables are said to be causally related if one variable causes the another. For example, 50 people in a party drank methyl alcohol accidentally and all of them got unconscious. So here drinking methyl alcohol became a causal factor for unconsciousness. So several criteria needs to be met to establish causality. For example, temporality, dose response relationship, biological plausibility, etc. So for further information, you can refer to Hill's criteria of causation and also there is another model for causation which is called Rothman's causal pi model. So you can uh, read those references uh, to know in detail. So thank you very much guys. So these are the 10 frequently asked questions on research methodology. Hope you like the video and also please uh, share it with your colleagues if you found it useful and do subscribe to my channel to get future updates. Thank you. Bye bye. Cheers.